From age 23 to age 29, I was transporting from California to all over the Eastern Seaboard, okay? New York City, Buffalo, the Carolinas, Massachusetts, you name it, I was there. I was even getting pounds into the UK, Amsterdam, uh, Spain, you know, I was doing the East Coast and Europe. Uh, obviously, I don't do that anymore, but transporting drugs at that level taught me so much about life. For example, I got caught in 2020, okay? It kind of just ruined my life. But by the beginning of 2024, earlier this year, I became a corporate director, right? So how do I make that transition? You know, was it luck? No, absolutely not. Actually, it was because I learned so much game from dealing with the underworld of society that I was able to apply it to other areas of my life to get ahead. So I'm gonna give you what I learned so you won't have to deal drugs for 10 years and potentially catch a felony. One, do not take people's appearances at face value, okay? In the streets, right, The people, most of the people that I dealt with had a very specific look. Obviously, it has to do with jewelry, style of clothing, the way they, the way they style their clothes, tattoos, placement of tattoos, you know, hairstyles, you know, and, and the reasoning for this is to, you know, uh, at a subconscious level is because they want to look intimidating because in the business that they're in again there's no contracts you can't call the police like they have to look somewhat intimidating to the to the other party right so i've learned you can't assume too much about a person just based on their looks because someone might look like a straight gangster but they could be a Right? And I've seen that many times in my life. Same thing on the opposite, right? Like someone could be, someone could look like a complete square, but then they're actually a real gangster. You know what I mean? Like, and actually that person's the more dangerous, more intelligent person, right? So you just gotta be on your P's and Q's. And obviously you take in the perception that they're trying to project to you. Like, so you know, like, okay, this is the, I, the outward identity you're projecting but don't take it as face value. Like that's not who they are necessarily. Number two is don't believe the illusion of money. Sometimes people will create this illusion with money. Maybe they got fake chains, they make this illusion. And I saw it so much, you know, when I was, when I was in that, living in that underworld, when I was dealing there would be people who would have this illusion of, maybe they had 100K, maybe they stacked up 100K, but they would make this illusion of like they have 500K or a million, right? And the reason they do that is because, one, they could set you up to rob you, right? Because if you if you see someone that has money, they'll, you'll get a little bit more comfortable. And then now you kind of want to get on their good graces and you're, you're kind of like, your defense is down, your guard is down. So that's one. The other one is to make to make deals, right? So like if you're making deals with someone, you want to make deals with someone that's successful, right? Like if I've got... If I've got a hundred pounds to sell, I don't wanna sell my hundred pounds to someone who's gonna take forever to sell them or might not be able to sell them. If I see someone who's got chains and you know they're driving Europeans and you know they just look like they're successful, it's like, oh, I'm gonna give my hundred pounds to that guy because that guy's gonna move them for me. And he's gonna get me my money faster. I'm not gonna have trouble with prices. So it's all just an illusion. And sometimes they would just put that illusion out there to get what they want. And it actually makes me think a lot about like money Twitter or like these you know business gurus because a lot of it is bull bro like i look at that and so much of it is a lot of and even influencers even bro like there's influencers that i kind of with but at the end of the day i can see them and i'm just like bro you're bull i'm not their target market right like i got i got a little bit of game to me like i can i can look at them and know what's up their target market are dummies out there that have no type of street smarts they have no ability to differentiate reality from a facade. And that's most people, to be honest with you, that's their target market. And that's the reason I'm telling you this because you don't wanna fall for that. Two, this is kind of bouncing off one. So you can use people's perceptions to your advantage, right? So once you get good at not taking people's appearances at fa face value, you can alter your appearance to get the desired outcome you want. Obviously you can do it with clothes, with you know little things like that, wearing cologne. You know, if I, if I wear a suit, I do my hair all nice and make sure I'm shaved and everything. If I tell them, oh, I'm, a, I'm the CEO of a company, no one would second guess it. One time I went to a, a, an automobile dealership, not because I wanted to buy a car, but because I wanted to know what it felt like to drive a specific car. I didn't have the money for the car. It's a $100,000 car, right? I don't have the money for it, but what I decided to do was like, you know what? I'm gonna go drive it, test drive it, just so that I can know what it feels like to test drive it. So I had that in my mind. 
And the way I did it is I dressed up like I was successful. I put a suit on, boom, 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 did all that. And when I got there, you know, I'm acting like, you know, I'm acting like, oh, you know, I'm just here, I'm looking, I'm shopping. Yeah, I'm looking for, you know, that specific car, yeah. Can I test drive it though? I'm not sure if I want it. I want to make sure I like it. Bro, these people are jumping up just like, oh yeah, here, here's the key, here's the key. Yeah, come on, let's go. Because they think that you're going to buy it. Right, but if I walked in there like this, like, and this is, I'm well dressed, right? I'm well coordinated. But if I walked in there like this, they won't necessarily be so on it like that, right? So you can manipulate people's perception of you by the way you look. Not only the way you look, but your voice tone, um, the words you use, uh, body language, eye contact. You got to master these things. These, this is your energy. You got to master your energy. Once you do that you can use it to um, get your desired outcomes number three is show love showing love is the greatest thing you can do and you do this to get on people's good graces bro and honestly this is how i got from i went from selling ounces and eights to my friends to the international stage where i'm selling pounds i went from selling 200 dollars ounces to making like 10 20 30 40 thousand dollar deals on an international scale on a on a on a on a national scale because i was showing love to people you know and it's not just about it's it's little things and big things right so let me break that down for you the little things like you just when you get to know people you start just to kind of like feel them out and you're gonna learn things about them and then you like give them compliments right like oh you know hey man like you know if someone's dressed really well like hey bro like you got that shit on today bro like that's what's up bro like yeah, hey, hey, you need to give me tips on how to dress better. I want to get like you. And it's just like you're you're kind of putting it on thick, but at the same time, it's coming from a genuine place because you want them to know that you're showing love, right? They receive it that way. And then on the other hand, sometimes it's good to give people things, right? So like, for example, the first time I went to New York, I had a plug out here in Northern California, right? A plug is someone that you're getting your product from. So it was a weed farmer. So the first time I went to New York to do a big deal, I went out there. I wouldn't have had the opportunity to make this deal if I didn't have the plug, right? So to show my love to him, what I did is I, you know, obviously I took the, the product from California, I took it to New York, sold it, made my money. But while I was in New York, I found some really nice Dominican rum. I came back. So the next time I saw my plug out in Northern California, I gave him the bottle of rum because I know he likes to drink. I know he likes drinking like exotic right he appreciated it it's little things like that that really make a difference and it and it puts you in their good graces right because think about it this guy he's the farmer he has access to a thousand pounds now i'm not his only client he's probably got 10 other people and maybe out of these 10 people maybe i'm not the top seller maybe i'm not selling as much as four of the other ones but because i show him so much love he's always going to save me good packs Oh, what do you need? Oh, Miggy, what do you need? Oh, you need 10 packs? All right, I got you. He's not gonna be like, oh, I only got three because I gotta hold these other ones for the other person. No, he's gonna give me favorability because he, he sees that I show him love. Now, how did I translate this into the corporate world? I'll give you an example. When I first started working at the job that I'm working at, I had a mentor and she was a sales director, right? I was a sales associate. So she was mentoring me on the sales cycle. Now, two years later, I'm a sales director. She is like a vice president. I was living in Colombia earlier this year. I still bought her and her son a soccer jersey. Why? Because I appreciate the opportunity she gave me, right? Like she, she really helped me out. She put in a good word for me multiple times. She's a, I'm really honestly sure she's a big reason that I did not get laid off during the two rounds of layoffs we've had in the past two years. Right, because she would speak very highly of me behind closed doors, behind my back when I'm not there. And I would always go out of my way to like get things for her son, get things for her and just mail it. And it, again, it's not like I'm expecting anything, but it was straight from the heart. It was straight, you know, like I really meant this, like, hey, you're hella cool. You know, I got this for you. Here you go. And, and you got to mean it. It can't be, it can't be bullshit, bro. Number four, number four is loyalty. You know, if someone shows you love, helps you, brings you up, or gives you an opportunity, the way you should look at it is we're bonded for life, right? Because again, in the world that I came from, that's what it was like. Like if someone showed me love, gave me opportunity, oh, I'm bonded to you for life, right? Whether it was on one side, whether if it was my plug who's giving me the product that I needed, that's my boy, I'm bonded to him for life. As long as everything is good, I'm bonded, I got him, whatever he needs. And then on the other side, like let's say I go to uh, New York, I had people out there that I was working with, 
you know, I'd sell them the product. Those are my clients. We're bonded for life. What do you need? Because these two people are giving me opportunity. I was making a lot of money at the time because of those two people. So my loyalty was with them. Obviously, you got to always be on your P's and Q's, right? You can't give blind loyalty. You got to be on top of things. You're always watching. You got to watch people. But for the most part, you got to be ready to be loyal. To this day, I have people from that time of my life that to this day, if they called me and they needed something that I can help them with, I'll go out of my way to do it. You know, I wouldn't ask for anything in return. Why? Because there was a time in my life that they gave me opportunity, you know, or, or they helped me with something that I needed. And it's like we're bonded for life. So that's one thing that you need to you need to be able to do. Right. You need to be able to do it and without a contract. A handshake and a look in the eye is like, now we're bonded for life. You just you just need to have that kind of loyalty in you. Five, you need to be able to pay attention to details when you're talking to people. And this kind of goes back to number one, right? So don't take people's appearance at face value. What you want to do is pay attention to their energy. What do I mean by that? Look at their eyes, right? When you're talking to them, look how their eyes are moving, right? It's very important. Listen to the words they're saying and also listen to the words they're not saying. OK, so like maybe they're not mentioning something or maybe maybe you did them a favor, but they're not saying thank you. And they're just going on like if nothing happened. That's very important right there. You need to take note of those things. Right. Or maybe you're talking to someone and they're praising you or whatever. But you can just, something in their eyes just looks a little off or maybe something in their body language. Right. Like maybe, you know, you're talking to someone and they're trying to convince you of something, but their but their body is not even directed towards you. They're like talking. They're facing this way. They might be looking at you, but their body is facing this way and they're talking to me. I don't trust that. Right. So you got to be able to like differentiate differentiate these types of things this is like basic blueprint just to move around in the world to network with people even in your own community bro like i've been i came here to santa clara about two years ago santa clara california bro i know the the local coffee shop that everyone goes to that all the college kids go to the cool coffee shop i know the all the workers i know the firefighters and i just i you just start to meet people because if you apply these little rules it's easy to connect with people and then connecting with people brings you opportunities. And then you can be like me, bro. You could be a sales director at a national corporation. Okay. So that's it for today, man. I'll see you on the next one.